our next session is due now, which is a much uh, sought after session. Uh, the chairpersons are Dr. H.K. Chopra and Dr. Shoru Mukherjee. Uh, nobody really needs an introduction. Only my submission is that Dr. Chopra is one of the most accomplished cardiologists in India and across the world. And Dr. Shoru Mukherjee is a very senior professor. So the mic, the stage is yours, sir. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Sumitra Ray. At the outset, I express my gratitude to Dr. Santana Goa and Sumitra Ray for giving me this opportunity. This subject is very new. And the speaker is not new. The speaker is a very accomplished person. We call him as an Indian world father of hypertension. And the subject is very new. It has not been tapped, but it has a lot of potential to reduce the uh, decline of uh, cognition if you control the hypertension very effectively. I'm sure he's going to throw, Dr. Bankit Ram is going to throw light on this subject, new arena, new management, new modalities, new protocol. I think all these things we discuss. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I present to you Dr. C. Venkata S. Ram for his most prestigious presentation of this session. Dr. Ram, sir. Thank you, HK. At the outset, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, let me thank Dr. Santana Goha uh, again thinking of me. Uh, this has become an annual uh, ritual that I adhere to. Uh, and it's really a privilege to participate in this particular meeting. I have always mentioned to him, and I say it publicly, it is one of the best CME meetings in India, and uh, it's, my, it's my privilege. And uh, before uh, coming to the meeting, I got a call from uh, Dr. H.K. Chopra's wife that unless I wear a shirt that is pink in color, like H.K. Chopra's uh, jacket, uh, I will not be allowed to participate in the Zoom meeting. And I could not, I could not disappoint Dr. Guha. So I found a shirt finally, which was required from the Chopra family for me to wear. And I hope that it is displaying the color. Same thing, myself and Dr. H.K. Chopra. Uh, let me start sharing the screen, and then I will uh, start the session. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, this is an important uh, topic for all of us, uh, because this is something that we don't think about it. Uh, when we think about high blood pressure, as you heard from the previous uh, speakers, you think about vascular disease, you think about heart disease, you think about heart failure, you think about proteinuria, you think about CKD, you think about dialysis, you think about uh, end-stage renal disease, but we don't really think about dementia and connect it to high blood pressure. In fact, uh, dementia is one of the most serious complications of uh, high blood pressure a very important complications of high blood pressure. Dementia, by definition, is progressive loss of intellectual function. A lot of times we assume that dementia is a natural component of aging process. In fact, none of the aging studies have shown that dementia is connected to aging. In fact, it's very interesting. A few studies have shown that with the aging, the cognitive function improves, does not uh, decrease. So ladies and gentlemen, we should uh, forget the notion of relationship that aging is associated with dementia, but dementia is generally in the elderly is due to vascular dysfunction, also known as vascular dementia. So let me share with you now the relationship between elevated blood pressure and the onset of dementia and what can be done to improve cognitive function in our patients with high blood pressure. Uh, it has been shown that once the patient develops stroke, uh, there is a very high risk of dementia in people who recover from stroke. And stroke is the only complication that is directly related to high blood pressure. Because in patients with coronary artery disease, there are multiple reasons. In patients with chronic kidney disease, there are multiple reasons. There is only one complication that is completely attributable to high blood pressure, and that is stroke. And in patients who develop stroke, 
dementia is an important consequence of a stroke. Ladies and gentlemen, dementia and high blood pressure is not a new topic. It's a topic that we're discussing, but this has been known for a long time. You see, this is in a very old study in uh, late 60s showing that hypertensive levels of blood pressure are associated with intellectual loss. So this has been demonstrated before we had CT scan, before we had MRI, actually before we had neurology as a, as a designated specialty. So ladies and gentlemen, the observation of linking cognitive function to blood pressure has been known to physiologists for a long period of time. Now, we are going to see an increasing number of people with dementia over the next several years. And much of these occurs in the elderly population, but not because of age, but because elderly people have high blood pressure, and if it is not controlled, it contributes to dementia. Now you'll see that in next few years, ladies and gentlemen, there is going to be a 300% increase in dementia in China and Asia. So basically 90% of cases of dementia in the next two decades will come from India and from China and we need to do something about it. One of the things that occurs in uh, patients with hypertension, if they undergo brain imaging, they have what is known as white matter lesions. And this is a radiological term when there is accumulation of amyloid material and when there is ischemic mass multiple, they just call it as white matter lesions because this is affecting mainly white matter. But when you see white matter lesion, ladies and gentlemen, it is an extremely serious finding. It is not a benign finding. It indicates there is a structural damage to the brain for a number of reasons. The principal contributor of white matter lesions is high blood pressure. And this is a study that was uh, done looking at white matter lesions and the risk of dementia. You will notice the more number of white matter lesions a person has, there is a higher risk of dementia. The fewer white matter lesions we have, there is a lesser risk of dementia. So Mr. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, I have so far shown relationship between blood pressure and white matter lesions. Now I have shown you the relationship between white matter later and dementia. So I'm going to link this pathophysiologically, just like the Cox postulates. I'm going to link the blood pressure to dementia and the pathways by which dementia occurs. Hypertension is very strongly linked to brain lesions, which are white matter lesions. So if there is a report that comes white matter lesion, it is not a benign finding. It is not something that one should actually ignore because it is a portender for the onset and progression of dementia. Now, I have shown you this earlier that in most countries, the dementia incidence will increase after the age 75 and Asia is not an exception. Asia also will continue to see a significant increase in patients who are diagnosed with dementia. A number of years from 1970s to now have shown with follow-up, and some of the studies have been followed for about 30 years. And you will notice every single study with high blood pressure has shown that it is associated with cognitive decline, it is associated with dementia, and many people or misdiagnosed Alzheimer's disease. What happens in Alzheimer's disease is somebody has dementia, we call it Alzheimer's disease. So basically it is vascular dementia rather than typical Alzheimer's disease. So ladies and gentlemen, this is only a segment of studies that have confirmed a relationship between the diagnosis of hypertension and onset of cognitive dysfunction. Now, higher the blood pressure, greater is uh, the risk of cognitive dysfunction. This is a slide showing the relationship between cognitive dysfunction, mild blood pressure, green, moderate, orange, severe hypertension, blue. 
you will notice at every level of blood pressure, higher the blood pressure, greater is the diagnosis of dementia. Let me now turn to the pathophysiology of high blood pressure and dementia. What happens with chronic hypertension, uncontrolled hypertension, uh, people can develop stroke, you can develop cerebral vessel disease. Most importantly, ladies and gentlemen, you accumulate what is known as beta amyloid. There is accumulation of beta amyloid and the short form for beta amyloid is not BA, but AB. That's one way to remember, it's just reverse. Whenever there is accumulation of beta amyloid, there is a structural damage to the brain. As a result, there is a protein uh, dysmetabolism in the brain resulting in the patches of beta amyloid in the brain. And the presence of beta amyloid is really a MRI marker of onset and progression of dementia. So what happens is with chronic hypertension, uncontrolled, they develop a beta amyloid accumulation, which is a marker like troponin for uh, ischemic heart disease. It is a marker of uh, uh, dementia. Now let me show you. This is a very nice demonstration that chronic hypertension disturbs the pathophysiology of vascular function in the brain. And whenever this vascular dysfunction occurs, there is accumulation of beta amyloid. In fact, they use the word here, synaptic toxicity. That means synapses are toxic and they're not able to connect. When they don't connect, there is no neurotransmission. So ladies and gentlemen, high blood pressure leading to beta amyloid accumulation, leading to synaptic dysfunction, causes disturbances in neurotransmission. And one of the manifestations of disturbances in neurotransmission is loss of intellectual function, also known as dementia. So let me summarize this part of my talk about pathophysiology. High blood pressure leads to stroke, which may lead to dementia. High blood pressure leads to cerebral atrophy, which may lead to dementia. Hypertension leads to white matter lesions, which may lead to dementia. So high blood pressure can cause dementia by two mechanisms. Number one, it causes dementia directly without causing stroke. But it can also cause dementia through causation of stroke. You saw that the presence of stroke causes dementia. So high blood pressure causes cerebral dysfunction directly or through causing stroke, both mechanisms. So let me summarize the pathophysiology that high blood pressure is associated with lacunar infarcts. That means any lesion in the brain that is less than 20 millimeters in size. White matter lesions, micro infarcts, any lesion in the brain that is less than one millimeter in size. And high blood pressure can also cause Alzheimer's disease. All these four components can contribute to onset of cognitive impairment or dementia. Now, let me make some final remarks on what we can do about it. This is a very recent article that looked at 209 studies. Ladies and gentlemen, that is a lot of number of studies to look at. They have shown that a blood pressure systolic greater than 130 is associated with a 34% increase in cognitive impairment. Not 5%, not 8%. Blood pressure greater than 130 is associated with a cognitive impairment by 34%. Myself and Dr. Chopra have written an editorial in circulation three years ago, why the blood pressure should be less than 130. And now you see the reason is that it increases the cognitive impairment by 34%. But when there is darkness, there is also light. When there is night, daytime ultimately occurs. It has been shown that antihypertensive therapy, namely blood pressure reduction, may prevent the risk of dementia. These are the earlier studies looking at the association between antihypertensive drugs and dementia. As you notice, all these studies have shown that chronic antihypertensive therapy decreases the risk of dementia. So dementia can occur 
but the risk of dementia decreases with chronic antihypertensive drugs. This is another set of studies, older versus new. All of them demonstrate favoring treatment as opposed to placebo. So antihypertensive therapy in comparison to placebo, namely uncontrolled hypertension, has been shown to decrease the incidence of dementia significantly, really significantly. Let me show you a very important study. Uh, okay, this is a study where there is an overall risk of dementia is 2.3, but uncontrolled hypertension, the risk is through 3.4. But when you treat hypertension, the risk goes down to 1.9. So ladies and gentlemen, very beautiful study demonstrating that uncontrolled hypertension leads to dementia, controlling hypertension decreases risk of dementia. This is a study goes under acronym MOSES, where elderly patients were treated for high blood pressure. You will notice systolic blood pressure was treated, it came down. Diastolic blood pressure was also treated, it came down. But when the blood pressure improved at the end of the study, the cognitive function also increased. Very beautiful demonstration that there is a reciprocal relationship between blood pressure and cerebral function. In this particular study, where systolic and diastolic blood pressure went down, there is an improvement in cognitive function in your patients. What is the relationship between the magnitude of blood pressure reduction and cognitive impairment quantitatively? Greater the blood pressure drop, greater is the cognitive impairment. You will notice when you drop the systolic blood pressure by 40 millimeters, there is a tremendous improvement in uh, cognitive function. When you drop it less, there is some improvement, but not as improvement as a robust uh, drop in blood pressure. Namely, when you reduce the blood pressure significantly, there is a maximum benefit. Whereas if you leave the blood pressure uncontrolled, 140, 150, 160, you don't see much improvement. So there is a quantitative relationship between the quantity of blood pressure reduction and the quantity of cognitive improvement. And finally, very important study that all of you are familiar with, SPRINT. In SPRINT, they also studied people who were more than 75 years of age. The blood pressure was either 120 or 140. You will notice that in patients 75 or over, there was a significant improvement in morbidity and mortality at blood pressure at 120 compared to 140, systolic. But they studied cognitive function. What noted, they noted was the cognitive decline was arrested when systolic blood pressure was close to 120, namely intensive treatment shown in the red color. You will notice the progression of dementia was significantly attenuated or reversed when the blood pressure was reduced to 120. So ladies and gentlemen, don't uh, abandon patients over the 75 years of age or more because we're going to get there, all of us. Don't abandon them. Don't, don't make them as orphans because when you treat hypertension, not only you decrease cardiovascular morbidity and mortality, but SPRINT has demonstrated that you actually improve their cognitive function. So what they have shown is that when you reduce the blood pressure in the aging population, you actually improve all degrees of dementia. And that is what they have shown in the SPRINT study, a wonderful study to demonstrate that older people should not be neglected. Don't put them away. You know, are buddha ho gaya, buddhi ho gaya, usko chodo. Not, not all this stuff, please, because we are also getting there. So, ladies and gentlemen and panelists, let me conclude. Dementia is a dangerous complication of hypertension. Aggressive blood pressure control decreases the chance of developing dementia. Aggressive blood pressure control improves the cognitive function. So one important hypertension is to preserve function. And lastly, uh, this is my last slide. Normal brain imaging, normal brain aging might decrease our multitasking, but it does not decrease memory, skills, and knowledge, which are stable. And in fact, NIH, Centers for Disease Control is NIH, has actually said that these things improve with aging. 
improve with aging. So dementias are not inevitable part of the aging process. Nor with normal brain aging, we retain skills and knowledge learned through our lives. So they don't decline. And this is something that I got a communication from one of our managing director's granddaughter, uh, namely uh, Dr. Pratap Reddy's granddaughter. She has sent me this other day, uh, just a pure coincidence. I really was surprised that I got this communication from her. Very beautiful communication. Take care of your mind, your body will thank you. Take care of your body, your mind will thank you. Very beautiful. So Mr. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, and Dr. Santono Goha, uh, let me thank you for allowing me to participate. And in the time that was allocated to me, I connected the blood pressure to cognitive dysfunction, not only by level of blood pressure, but also the pathophysiology of multiple mechanisms by which dementia can occur. I showed you the studies where they have shown treatment of hypertension favors improvement in dementia. And I show you a series of studies coming to the same conclusion, ending with SPRINT, which also showed. So ladies and gentlemen, there is no reason to despair. We can prevent dementia in the population by controlling hypertension aggressively. Don't say chalta hai, chalta hai, chalta hai. Chalta kuch chalta nahi, marta hai, chalta nahi. So you don't say that. So you prevent dementia, but somebody has dementia, don't abandon them to a senior's home or somebody, don't abandon them to a caretaker. The studies have shown that treatment of hypertension actually improves the cognitive dysfunction. So there is despair, there is hope, but we always favor hope over despair. With those remarks, Mr. Chairman, uh, Mr. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, and Dr. Santono Goha, uh, Bhishma Pitamaha's father, Santano. So with those <laughs> remarks, I'll conclude. Thank you very much for this opportunity. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Venkat Ramsar, for a beautiful and most lucid presentation. I think your message was very, very clear. And the cutoff parameter of the systolic blood pressure is a real information and a message for everyone. At any cost, our systolic blood pressure should not go beyond 130. And you've shown a very beautiful date. I think it is a mind boiling. We have to consider not only in ourselves, but also in our patients, that we must make sure that the blood pressure does not go beyond 130. Dr. Vekkan Ram has also given one more very important message that dementia is not inevitable. Very important sentence. I don't know from where he chooses all this, but this is a very important sentence. We have to take care of ourselves. Ye nahi bolna chalta hai chodo. Chalta nahi marta hai. Hindi also he speaks very well. I think this is a very important message. And the way he described the pathophysiology, that it is the beta amyloid which get deposited and the white score which of MRI is very important. I just only one small question, Dr. Venkata. You use the word Alzheimer's or pre-Alzheimer's in one of your slides. Is there any distinction between the Alzheimer and the dementia or there any biochemical markers we can say or there is no uh, or there is a very thin margin between the pre-Alzheimer's pre or Alzheimer's and dementia We'd like to have your opinion, sir. I know we're running out to one, one of the complications uh, of high blood pressure. Forget uh, what I talked about is vascular dementia, but uh, Alzheimer's is an independent entity, and there is a high prevalence of Alzheimer's in patients with hypertension. And uh, they always mention hypertension is a risk factor for Alzheimer's, but many of these patients with Alzheimer's are misclassified as Alzheimer's. They actually have vascular dementia. We call that al Alzheimer's because, sorry to say, it's a very convenient term, very convenient term. We say that so that we can conclude the matter. But actually, many cases of Alzheimer's are due to vascular, uh, it's vascular dementia. Now, what can happen? Of course, you can get to Alzheimer's without the hypertension. But one of the things that is common, both in Alzheimer's, and in vascular dementia is the deposition of beta amyloid. Both of them have beta amyloid. Only thing is those mi microinfarcts 
less than uh, one millimeter in size, and lacunar infarcts. All of us are used to using this term, lacunar infarcts. Uh, the lesions less than 20 millimeters, they are more common in vascular dementia, hypertension, but you don't see them in Alzheimer's. Thank you very much, uh, you. Dr. Venkat Ram. I think I just give my tribute for a beautiful presentation. Are there any questions or suggestions or comments from anyone else before we close the session? Dr. Santanu, Sumitra Ray, or anybody else? Just one can comment, I, sir. Can I, can I ask you a question, sir, Dr. Ram? Sir. Sir. Yeah, if the brain is a neuroplastic organ and the short term, long term memory depends on neurochemical changes in the short term. In the long term, there is neuroplasticity, the structural changes of that. By improving the cognitive power of human being, can you change the blood pressure? <laughs> uh, no, no idea. <laughs> uh, you're seeing the reverse. Uh, you know, just like obstructive, you, what you're saying is, by treating obstructive sleep apnea, the blood pressure goes down. Yeah. So by basically you're giving the same analogy. I have no idea. I never no. thought of it. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm using the word never thought in this uh, context. Uh, Yoga and pranayam can certainly reduce blood pressure. So mind has got something to do with blood pressure, definitely. What I want to say to conclude is that both Dr. Chopra and Dr. Ram have proven themselves in their life that with age, memory, knowledge, and skill can increase. And they can still wear pink shirts in their 70s. So that itself proves the subject beyond any doubt. So thank you very much to all of you, as well as Dr. Shaurav Mukherjee. We are competing on our shirt and jacket will go on until 90 years of age. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, Dr. Ram and Dr. Chopra.